Patrick L. Wooden Sr. Hallelujah. And we honor the Lord for this director of women's ministry who has hosted an awesome conference. Come on, let's clap our hands for First Lady Pamela Wooden. Amen. You may be seated. We honor the Lord also for our bishop's assistant, first assistant, John Amanchukwu, my husband, and I honor him this morning. We honor his second and third assistants and all of the men of God. We honor the women of God and all of you who are here. At this time, let us receive and have greetings from the director of women's ministry and our first lady. Come on, let's clap our hands real hard for first lady. Pamela Wooden. Well, come on and clap your hands for the Lord Jesus and give God a mighty praise in the house. Oh, I know it's 8 a.m. Hallelujah. We've got to wake up a little bit, but I'll tell you the glory of the Lord has been with us all weekend long and we thank the Lord for his presence and for his glory amen we thank God once again for our great pastor and our, and our leader don't we honor the man of God for giving us this time and giving us this space praise the Lord we thank God for our bishop and I tell you he kicked it off on Thursday night Amen. We thank God. And I tell you, on Friday night was just over the top. And then on yesterday, the Lord blessed us once more and again. Amen. We thank God for Elder Wilson, for Elder um, Williams, to all of the men of God. Amen. Uh, to uh, Evangelist Amanchukwu leading us in worship on this morning. And certainly to our very special guest, Dr. Prophetess Latara Tillman all the way from Georgia. We're so glad to have this woman of God here with us. We thank God for Sister Latanya Listenby, our Vice President. Amen. And to all of the women of God, our beautiful mothers, I tell you, it did my heart so uh, glad to see so many of the mothers with us on yesterday uh, while we were at the hotel and even on Friday night. We appreciate your support. We appreciate the support of the saints of God. And I tell you, I believe that the Lord has uh, prepared this woman of God uh, for what he wants to impart into us on today. Amen? We've come, y'all did come looking for another move of God, didn't you? Praise the Lord. <laughs> we have come looking for a move of God, and we're looking to the Lord, for the Lord has already prepared her for what he wants to impart into us on this morning. And I say to you, set out your cups, prepare your hearts to hear and to receive the word of the Lord. The Lord is going to bless us. Let us uh, sit with anticipation, waiting to hear what the Lord has to say. God bless you, is my prayer. Praise the Lord. We are so excited. If you would rest upon your feet, it is my honor to present to you our church girl defender, our man of God, who has led us... And, and, and is leading us from earth to glory. And it is his leadership that has given us the space and time to have this we women's weekend. Not only are we serving the Lord, we are serving in the beauty of holiness. We are serving in doctrine. We are correct. We are standing on a firm foundation that God would be pleased with. And we thank God because we know that it is the result of the leadership of our man of God, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. Come on, let's clap our hands as we receive our leader, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let us give praises to the God of the Bible, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You might be seated in his presence. We are moving 
as expeditiously as possible because we have a tremendous speaker today who is going to bless us real good. She's a worshiper first and a preacher second, and I tell you, she's going to worship and preach to us today. But saints, I have just such tremendous good news, and I honor everyone today, and I certainly honor the president of this women's department. I thank God for my wife for the tremendous job that she's doing, and I want to thank the women of the upper room for your commitment, your response, your support, and I tell you, it's been a great weekend, and um, we need these things in such a time as this. I saw where on the uh, campus of the University of Wisconsin, college students taking pages of the Bible, ripping them out of the Bible, and eating them in protest. These are college students. And um, I was sharing with the prophetess last night that we live in a country where hostility toward biblical Christianity is growing. I heard a story not long ago, uh, two weeks ago actually, uh, from a preacher who was in, who told the story of a Hindu nation. You know, in Hindu nations, Christianity is not allowed to be preached. It is a, it is a, it is a federal offense. It's, as a matter of fact, it's a capital offense. Um, and you know, you, you wonder wh how, how did yoga and all that get in the church? which is those movements are worships. Those are, that you're worshiping Hindu gods, the downward dog and all of them. Uh, you act, and, and the Hindu want their religion back <laughs> while you're at it. But because we don't know things, because the thing may seem to be popular, we just, we just bring it into the church. And I'm going to tell you, under the days of Antiochus Epiphanes, one of the things that the temple of God was littered with, inside the temple, it was littered with, they had brought false gods and false, uh, false gods and statues and had them on the altar in the house of God. And then they put a pig on the altar. And that abomination represented it was the abomination the wickedness that causes desolation the abomination desolation a wickedness that causes desolation one of the things that happens is it causes desolation i.e. the Holy Spirit leaves the Holy Ghost pays attention to what we allow in the church what we do in the church, how we worship the Lord in the church. I want to know before I put the speaker up, who right quick will give God the largest praise uh, in this room right now. God's been too good. He's been so kind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's been too good to us. Brought us from too far. And as believers, we are called to make noise for Jesus Christ. I want to share some just some good news. Good morning, Pastor. And I generally save these for the 8 o'clock service. At 11 o'clock. But uh, I want to thank God where the Lord worked a miracle. She's a happy warrior. She's a mighty fighter for Jesus. And she was stricken with cancer. And she fought the good fight of faith, continued to serve, saved unborn babies' lives. And today, Sister Harris is here, and she is certified cancer free look at God look at God hallelujah hallelujah
Isn't he good? What a mighty God we serve. I really believe with all my heart, God honored your faith and honored your faithfulness and honored your stand for life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. I want to thank God for what he's doing. I want to thank God for every one of you. And I am going to present this woman of God. The first time that I got a chance to hear her, I had heard of her. But to hear her was doing the uh, AIM conference. And I own Tamika Douglas. Miss Tamika in the, here at the 11, at the 8 o'clock, and she may be in the 11 o'clock service. She'll be at the 11. Uh, she she um, uh, presented that day, and the Lord used her mightily. And um, Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole is the president of our evangelism. And um, Pam and I went, and we heard the word of the Lord. And um, Tamika Douglas was a typical uh, Tamika. She did a tremendous job. And we were extraordinarily proud of her. And after hearing from her, you know, I could listen to Dr. Cole all day. And so uh, after uh, she began to put up uh, these the speakers, and she put up Prophetess Tillman. And uh, I just knew that this was not the time to tip out <laughs> and go somewhere else and, you know, you the bishops are always in chambers. There are multiple things going on. But I, I wanted to hear. And, um, uh, and uh, the men's ministry, um, we had, it was just a good time to stay and be blessed. And oh, I was glad that I stayed. And my wife and I walked out of the gathering and we were trying to figure out how we could get this woman of God. And ended up after... The, the official day and everything of AIM were all at the airport and lo and behold her and her husband was at the same gate that we were at and so you're talking about just good fellowship and we knew when we took our flight and I kind of felt well it's going to be a good flight because I know God's going to take care of the prophetess and I, uh, when we took our flight, I knew, uh, I knew that God would fix it where um, she could be with us. And that she's here today is extraordinary on her part. She's just closed out revival. And at the church where her husband and her pastor, where they share, it's, it's a big day today. They're having a, um, a, a tremendous observance uh, and yet she's here with us this morning. Amen. And, um, and she didn't come from um, vacation. She came from a revival to be at the upper room. And, and I, I thank the Lord for this woman of God. God's hand of favor is on her life. And she's a blessing to our church. In this day and time, we need people who are not afraid to say what needs to be said. We can dance around the issues. We can pretend that we don't notice. We can find other things to talk about. But in the meantime, Satan is gaining ground. The falling away is real. And preachers are called, first and foremost, to say something. Just, that's the primary job of a preacher, to speak up. If the preacher doesn't speak up, if the prophet doesn't speak up. How many things, when I mean, you, you, you're a Bible, uh, you, 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 uh, you know the word of God. You're scholars. What was the main thing that the prophets did in the Bible as you read about them? They spoke. They spoke. And they spoke to the issues of our times. And if we don't, Satan will walk in and he will make the church the world. Amen. 
And there are those of us who are just determined that that is not going to take place. I was, I was uh, praying today, and do we have a sermonic selection? Are we ready for the speaker? I was praying today, and, I, and uh, the Lord was speaking to my spirit, and God said, remind them, remind them all. That is why I've raised you up. I've blessed you. Brother Reverend, I've anointed you. I have given you titles and positions and all this stuff. I said, I did it for you to speak for me. I gave you, a, I've given you a platform to speak. And he says, if you speak for me, I'll use you. This woman of God is not afraid to speak for God. I ask that everyone would stand on their feet and remain standing until she has given us further instruction and receive. We're honored to have her here. She told, told us last night that this was her first time being in Raleigh. I'm glad that her first preaching engagement in this city was to come to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Would you receive Dr. Latara Tillman, God's prophetess? Come on, put those hands together and bless the Lord all over this house. Come on, if you love him, open your mouth and bless him. If he's did anything for you just this week alone, you got a right. You got a reason. You got a responsibility to bless him. Come on, bless him all over this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless him, we honor him, we extol him, we exalt him. There is nobody like him. He is the absolute, the only, the majestic, the glorious, the all in all. He is our savior, our redeemer. He is our God. Touch somebody around you and tell them, I don't want to hear any junk on today. I don't want to hear any mess on today. My life is on the line, and I need a word from the Lord. Find somebody else and tell them, I don't want to hear any junk on today. I don't want to hear any mess on today. My life is on the line, and I need a word from the Lord. And today, God's going to talk to me. God's going to heal me. God's going to deliver me. God's going to set me free, because there is nobody like him in all. God and do give God glory and reference to this great leader, Bishop Wooten. Come on, let's bless the Lord for Bishop Wooten and your beautiful, beautiful first lady. Would you bless the Lord for Lady Wooden? They have been beautiful hosts. The hospitality has been five star. And uh, my mother taught me that everybody uh, doesn't have to be nice, but when they're nice, you give them honor. And today I give your leaders honor. I give them honor on today for the kindness and for their love to me on this weekend. To all of these great men and women of God, all of these elders, the officials in their respected places, we do honor all of you on today. There is a word from the Lord this morning. Luke, the 13th chapter is where we're going to go. Luke 13. Luke 13. 
that's where we're going to go. Luke 13 and 11. If you have it, say amen. amen. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. 13A is where we're going to draw our theme, our thesis for today's preaching presentation. And he laid his hands on her. And he laid his hands on her. Why don't you just find somebody and tell them my subject on today, one touch. One touch, one touch one touch. Father, we thank you for your word that makes preaching easy, but we need it to be effective on today. Be glorified in this house, and we give you glory for all things in Jesus' name, and the church say amen. amen. Find somebody around you and tell them one touch, one touch, one touch, one touch, one touch, one touch. The New Testament mentions Luke briefly a few times. And the epistle to uh, the Colossians refers to him as simply a physician, one who heals. Thus, he is thought to have been both a physician and a disciple of Paul. Since the early years of the faith, Christians regarded him as a saint. When we look here in the book of Luke, we find here in this chapter that there is a serious issue that the physician is recording. He is simply talking about an infirmity that this woman had been plagued with for 18 years. When you look at the word infirmity, you find out that it is a disease. It is one that is feeble. But when I began to do my own study, I found out that it wasn't just an infirmity. It wasn't just a disease. It was a spirit of infirmity. When you begin to really study what the spirit of infirmity is, you will find out clearly that uh, the spirit of infirmity is uh, simply a sickness that's caused by a demonic stronghold. Some would not even pay attention closely to this because automatically they would think that uh, this woman being plagued and bowed over for 18 years is simply just dealing with a sickness. But she's not just dealing with a sickness, she's dealing with spiritual warfare. She's dealing with an attack that has been assigned to her life. Now how, how does these things come upon us? 
is simple is when we allow doors and gates to open. When we allow things to creep in to our mind, into our heart, and into our spirit, it causes us now to be open. We are now becoming portals to the transfer of demonic attack. And I don't know about you, but uh, 2022 has brought a lot of things to many of us. Many things that could have really broken us down and caused us to lose faith in what we are standing for and what we are believing. This is a moment that I believe that God is challenging uh, the body of Christ to understand who our opponent is, who we are really fighting against what is it that he wants from us how is it that he has chosen us among thousands uh, to come in our houses and turn them upside down to attack our bodies to attack our mind what is it that you got that the enemy wants you to lose on this journey what is it that is inside of you that he's threatened of that he doesn't want you to display or want you to walk out now look at somebody and tell them there's a secret inside of you whether you know it or not there is something that makes the enemy nervous there is something that makes the enemy mad and if anything that he can do is tear up your world he'll tear your world up because he wants you to give up your rights to what you got but I dare you to look across this church and tell somebody I'm not giving up nothing yeah I wish I had a real church in here Raw scream at somebody and tell them I'm not giving up nothing. Why am I not giving anything up? Because he's been too good to me. Oh my God, I ought to be dead. I ought to be in my grave. I ought to be the, talking to a tree. But he's been too good to me to let my guards down. It is a spirit. It is an attack of the enemy. Uh, I begin to share with the people prophetically in the year of 2019 as I begin uh, to uh, release the word of the Lord of what I saw was getting ready to happen within our country. Yeah, one of the things besides the virus as the Lord began to share with me, he said, tell the people of God that 2019 is going to be a year uh, that there is going to be a blanket of mental attacks on the minds of the people. I said, God, how long would this thing uh, be continue? He said, until 2025. From 2020 to 2025, you will find people that will be under great pressure and great attack of the enemy. I said, now Lord, what do you want me to tell the people? He said, tell them to guard their minds. Tell them to fall their spirit anchor themselves in worship anchor themselves in a prayer life anchor themselves in the word of God because that's the only protection that you're going to have because the enemy is not going to let up but he's going to turn the heat up why don't you just touch somebody and tell them I don't care what he turns up don't you let go yeah don't you throw in the towel don't you walk out the church don't you walk away from God but hang on in there uh, God began to talk to me Bishop uh, that this was going to be the hour of much attack on the world and you were going to see some of the greatest people begin to fall because their minds were going to be under so much stress and aggravation it's because this pandemic was designed to break you down they threw you in the house and they called it a quarantine and any introvert or extrovert will tell you that there is a climate of mental psychology that I must be adapted or adopted to because of who I am. So if you throw an introvert in a house, then they feel like the house is caving them in. You throw an extrovert in the house, they feel like nobody loves them. Y'all don't want to talk to me. It is a war that goes on in the mind because it, it's an assignment for 
for you to give will to the enemy and to the world one order. Are you hearing me? There are things that the devil is trying to make you do so that you will give up your rights of who you are as a human. And anything to make you feel like you're no longer human, they'll make you feel like you're a dog. They'll make you give in. So if they throw pebbles at you, they'll do such things because they don't want you to have any more power than what you got right now. Oh, but I wish I had a mates in church that'll lay hands on your mind and say the devil can't have my mind. I don't care what's happening in the government. I don't care what's happening among local officials. My mind belongs to God. I dare you to touch everybody around you and tell them your mind belongs to God. I don't care what the devil throws your way. Your mind belongs to God. I don't care what the enemy has got assigned to your family. Your mind it belongs to God. I'm going to get you out of here. So here we are. We are here in the text. And the Bible says that there is the spirit of infirmity. It is an attack of the enemy because somewhere in the life of this woman before 18 years ago, she opened a door. She allowed something that shipped in her personal life to become an entrance of demonic and diabolical attacks. Uh, it was so great in her life uh, that she did not know that what could have been five months last for 18 years. We are dealing with the church uh, where the enemy wants to imprison them. Uh, that this uh, thing that we've walked out uh, since 2020 uh, will become the cave uh, for us to stay in uh, for the rest of the decade. Uh, but I want to talk to some people uh, that are climate shifters. Uh, they understand I might be in the world, uh, but I'm not of the world. Uh, I don't care what's happening uh, within this world. Uh, I am a part of the kingdom of God. Uh, and because I got a right uh, to have whatsoever I say uh, that my words uh, will create my new world uh, and I can walk in it. Uh, so here we are. Here it is, uh, this woman. Uh, when the Bible clearly states to us uh, that there is uh, a warfare. Uh, this woman now uh, is fighting uh, for her life. Uh, she's fighting uh, for uh, her identity. Uh, but there are uh, spiritual uh, and spirits uh, that have overtaken uh, her entire world. Uh, the Bible says uh, that she's been inflicted uh, for the last 18 years. Uh, this thing has come up on her and it has caused a sickness uh, that caused her body to be bowed over. Uh, every now and then uh, I get in uh, some medical conversations uh, with my uh, armor bearer. She's an RN. And sometimes I ask her certain questions uh, because I'm curious about the body. I'm curious about when people come to me and they say, prophetess, I want you to pray for such and such. But when I I look in their body, I don't see what they're feeling. I said, what do you do when y'all are dealing with people that have these things that they say is happening in their body, but when y'all give them x-rays, y'all don't see what they're saying? Oh, because she's sanctified. She said, doctor, it ain't nothing but a spirit. It's demonic attack that happens in the mind. And if you're not careful how powerful your mind is, it will create something there that's not 
religion. Oh my God. I believe that what the church now is that the church is dealing with a sickness. It's dealing with some things that it is allowed itself to speak that is not really there. But I want to talk to some people on this Sunday morning that says I know that I'm experiencing some heat. I'm experiencing some warfare. I'm experiencing some time that I don't think that I can really survive out of it. But the Bible says that I can call those things that are not as though they were. Why don't you look at somebody and tell them it ain't what it look like. Oh, I know that's not good English. But excuse me, I'm from Georgia. But why don't you just talk like a Georgia and look at somebody and say it ain't what it look like. I know it's hard. I know it's tough. And I know it seems dreary. But it ain't what it look like. It's what the enemy is trying to plant in your mind. And the Bible says that there was a woman that had been under attack with the spirit of infirmity for 18 long years. This thing had already taken place. That not only was it in her head, but it got in her bones. That the Bible says that while she was walking, she was bent over for 18 long years. What do you do when things are happening in your body? What do you do when things are shifting because of your mind? Look at somebody and said the word say, and these things come out, but by fasting and pray. I wish I had a real hole in this church that say the only way we're going to defeat the enemy is that we got to go back to what we pushed away. We got to return back to the old landmark. Look at somebody and say the hole it's not just the way you look. Holiness is not just the way you shout. But holiness is calling us out into a sanctified life. That we'll go back to fasting and pray. The Bible says that this woman had been there for 18 years. Her body had been under attack. But something happened in only three verses that when Jesus saw her, he knew what was happening, but he had the answer. I need somebody to talk to everybody around you and tell them stop looking for the answer everywhere else. Get off the phone, woman. Get out the coffee shop. Stop the shopping trip and get to the place where you can get to Jesus. Something happened when she got to Jesus that the Bible says that when she got in his presence that all he did was touch her body. I got to leave y'all alone. But I came to tell you that one touch from the master shifted her whole life. One touch from Jesus caused a demonic attack to cease from her body and her mind. One touch caused all demons to run back to the pits of hell. And I came to talk to some people in this service that says I'm getting ready to run the devil out. He's been raging in my house. He's been raging in my mind. He's been raging in my family. But this is the last day that the enemy is going to cause my house to be turned upside down. Run to somebody and say, oh, neighbor. 
somebody had been hit with a mighty blow. 18 years. A life was turned upside down. Whenever you look at what we are dealing with, what's in your bloodline, what keeps happening after one generation to another generation to another generation. You accept it, it was a sickness, but it started off as a spirit of infirmity. My, my daughter was 15 years old. My husband's mother died from breast cancer when he was five. His grandmother, who raised him, died from the same kind of cancer a month after he and I got married. My daughter, body got afflicted when she was 15 years old. <laughs> Talking about an attack when you can't explain it to her. She wouldn't understand it. She's 15 years old. But because her mama. Knew that it was a door had been open. I said now wait a minute. Now you can. You took her grandmother out. Her great grandmother out. But this one belongs to me. I got where. I started hearing the Lord's voice, and I heard the Lord say, lay in the bed with her for seven days, and I'm going to tell you the times to lay hands on her. So throughout the night, for seven days, I didn't sleep. I was laying hands on my child. Messed around and went to a service. I was invited by Benny Hinn to come to a service sitting on the stage, and while I was on the stage, I heard him say, there is a young girl that is at a home and there is a lump in her chest. The Lord say it's gone. It's the first time I have been in the service. So I said, okay, let me call my mother. I leaned down, picked the cell phone up, called my mother. I said, mommy, I need you to go check a tear up. She said, okay. She said, what you seeing? I said, the man of God said, it's gone. She went in, she checked her. <laughs> It was gone. <laughs> tell somebody around you, tell them whatever's been trying to kill you, God's getting ready to kill it. Whatever's been trying to take your family out, God's getting ready to take it out. Death is being canceled. Sickness is being canceled. Every spiritual wickedness is being canceled right now. Lift your hands right there. God's getting ready to touch your body. I don't care if it's anxiety. I don't care if it's depression. I don't care what it is. The Lord's getting ready to touch your body. Lift your hands right where you are. I'm going to pray the prayer of healing. I'm going to pray the prayer of deliverance. And all I need you to do is give God the greatest response in praise because you're going to seal what has already been spoken. Father, we thank you now for the healing of the body because by your stripes, we are healed. Thank you right now that you are touching minds. You're touching organs. You're touching bones. You're touching even the blood. In the name of Jesus, we bless you right now for what you're getting ready to do. Seen and unseen, even in generation. Oh God, I pray now that you would do a good thing in the lives of your people. Heal and deliver. Free right now in the name of 
Lord Jesus. And we bless you. Now I need you to touch the area and then open your mouth and bless it right there. I said open your mouth. Seal it with a praise. Seal it with a praise. I said seal it with a praise. And it is so. I see the blood now coming into alignment. Yeah, the aches in the back around the kidneys. I command it to go right now. Even the extremities in the legs. I command it to be loose now. In the name of Jesus. Healing in the limbs. Healing in the limbs. Healing in the limbs. Some of you have been stuck with praise and God. The God's getting ready to strengthen your limbs. To praise them like never before. Yeah! 